Farmers in the United States have two goals. The first is to cultivate livestock and crops. The second is to protect them from feral hogs and other invasive species. A lot of time has passed since the U.S. faced an invasion of feral hogs. With their vast experience, American farmers felt confident in their ability to repel invaders and even win the battle, if not for super pigs that appeared in Canada. Just to be clear, it's not how nature reacts when people catch too many pigs. As usual, it's man's fault. So now we have... Super pig invasion. <laughs> So let's start by figuring out what exactly these super pigs are, because it sounds like the title of some quirky comic book. But no, super pigs are real animals, and we can thank Canadians for their creation. The idea behind it was pretty simple and practical. Since Canada has a colder climate than the US, they wanted to make animals that could withstand it better. So in the 1980s, they started mixing domestic pigs with wild boars, and it worked. These super pigs ended up being larger and sturdier than regular pigs. These pigs gave much more meat, plus they were easier to shoot in Canadian game reserves because they were often released into the wild for hunting. It would seem to be a win-win situation. Okay, you already know things didn't go well, but just how bad was it? To better understand the challenges farmers are dealing with down the line, it's crucial to know what sets super pigs apart. Besides the obvious features engineered into them, these pigs are incredibly large. As adults, they can tip the scales at over 485 pounds, double the weight of the largest feral pigs found in the United States. Wild pigs in America typically weigh between 75 and 240 pounds. They stand around three feet tall at the shoulders and measure about five feet in length. With these dimensions, they're pretty robust and potentially dangerous creatures you'd want to avoid. But the super pigs are way bigger. Imagine a creature that combines the toughness of feral pigs with the big size and high reproduction rate of domestic ones. What do you get? A total beast that seems impossible to stop. Seriously. And yes, these super pigs aren't just big, they're also covered in fur which gives them extra resistance to the cold. But it doesn't end there. When it comes to the usual feral hogs American farmers are used to dealing with, one thing always works. Cold. Lower temperatures prevent these hogs from spreading into northern states. However, the so-called super pigs don't have these problems. Originally designed for colder conditions, these animals are genetically adapted to survive. With human assistance, super pigs have actually evolved to handle the harsh winters in western Canada, where wind chill temperatures can drop to minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. What's fascinating is that super pigs easily adapt to the cold not just because they were big and furry, they actually developed a strategy that not every intelligent animal would have thought of. Pigs are known for their intelligence, but it's surprising just how smart they can be. Super pigs use their tusks to dig tunnels under the snow, sometimes going as deep as 6.6 .6 feet. Once there, they create a cozy hideout, bringing in cattail for bedding or settling where it naturally grows. It's like they've mastered the art of building igloos. You might not even notice it unless you know where to look. When it's really cold outside, the inside of an igloo gets so hot that the air inside rushes out and turns into vapor. But it only works if the temperature outside is below minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. I have to admit, the way these pig homes are described makes them seem really comfy. But let's not forget that super pigs are animals that pose a huge danger to, well, to everyone. Wild and domestic animals, plants, even humans. Feral pigs are often considered the most harmful invasive species worldwide. Many experts agree that, in general, there's no other invasive species worse than feral pigs. Except for super pigs. These animals don't do anything special, they simply exist. Yet their way of living makes it impossible for others to coexist with them. Super pigs eat everything. They tear up the ground looking for insects and tasty root vegetables. They are skillful predators who eat small and not so small animals, eggs, and baby animals. They uproot trees, pollute the soil, and can severely degrade water quality. They are literally wrecking ecosystems. Yes, they even tear up cemeteries, even though it has nothing to do with animal life. Wherever these monsters roam, even the ordinary grass can't survive. Any lawn or meadow they pass through ends up looking like it got hit by a bomb. And the aftermath is just as devastating. Super pigs are also breeding grounds for diseases. And that's a major concern for scientists and farmers alike. 
The thing is, these pigs can carry all sorts of illnesses, like influenza, which can get to humans. The twist is, once the virus has been in a pig, it can change and create a brand new disease that we may not be prepared for. However, pigs can also suffer from a deadly disease that they can easily pass on to other farm animals. It's called African Swine Fever, a virus that was first identified in 1921. Since then, it's spread to various countries worldwide, causing devastating consequences each time. If feral pigs in the U.S. get infected with the virus, it could spread and potentially devastate the pig industry. It's worth noting that the U.S. is currently the third largest pork producer globally. The threat of African swine fever is very real. For example, after a particularly severe outbreak of the disease in 2018, farmers in China were forced to kill more than 43 million pigs to stop the spread of the virus. More than 43 million of them! And if you think China's too far away to be concerned about, know this. In 2021, they confirmed cases of the virus in pigs on farms in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. That's much closer, definitely more alarming. Researchers are also studying how diseases spread among feral pigs. Super pigs can carry a virus called pseudorabies, which doesn't harm humans but can lead to pig abortions and fatalities in other animals like raccoons, opossums, and even domestic cats and dogs. And those are just two diseases. The list of what super pigs can potentially spread is enormous. Knowing all this, the idea that pigs can casually wander into someone's backyard, dig up the soil, and eat whatever they find might not seem too alarming, even if they keep coming back for leftovers over several days. Honestly, as long as everyone stays safe and no one gets sick, it's okay. It's annoying and costly, but okay. So where did this all begin? Back in the 1980s in Canada, they started breeding these super pigs. But pigs, whether they're domestic or wild, are basically newcomers to North America. The first time pigs were mentioned in the continental United States goes way back to 1539. That's when Hernando de Soto, a Spanish explorer, landed in Florida with his crew and 13 pigs. While DeSoto was up to no good for four years during his expedition, an interesting thing was happening with the pigs. Their population reached about 700. These pigs then roamed around the southeastern United States, but surprisingly, they didn't create any trouble for a while. Wasn't until a few decades ago that people started releasing feral pigs into areas where they hadn't lived before. Why? To hunt them. But instead of becoming someone's trophy, feral pigs began to multiply at an alarming rate. Since then, the U.S. hog population has grown to more than 6 million in about 34 states. What about Canada? Pigs were introduced there in the 1980s, turned into super versions of themselves for meat production, and then the market peaked and collapsed in the early 2000s. Nobody wanted the pigs anymore. They couldn't be sold or given away, so the farmers decided to set them loose, thinking they'd just freeze to death in the wild. Who knew these super pigs were ready for this test? So instead of succumbing to the cold, they multiplied, quickly. In the 1990s, there were hogs in 27 watershed areas. Over the last decade, that number increased to 348. By 2017, 993 watershed areas were affected, and hog habitat covered an area of 300,000 square miles. It's a lot. And you know what the biggest problem is? The feral hog issue used to be mainly in the warm southern states of the U.S., but just when people thought they seemed to have figured out how to deal with feral hogs, super pigs started migrating from the north, and it seems like there's no stopping them. Soon, these pigs might be all over the place. Experts agree that it's important to take aggressive action and use all available methods. This includes having surveillance systems in place and being ready to respond swiftly when someone is detected. It also means having traps on the ground, net guns fired from helicopters, setting up warning systems, and possibly using poisons. Although there's some debate about that last one. In some parts of the U.S., the wild hog population has given rise to a thriving hog hunting industry, where people are paid thousands of dollars to use machine guns for the task. It doesn't sound very effective, almost like Australia's war on emus, which if you remember ended with the birds coming out on top. Some states are easing hunting restrictions, like in California, where feral hogs can now be hunted year-round. This change is due to the hogs causing trouble by damaging cultivated land, competing with other wildlife for food, and ruining the landscape. In February 2022, two Texas counties took a unique approach to tackle the feral pig issue. Hunters now get $5 for every feral pig they kill. All they need to show as proof is the pig's tail. 
If the reward doesn't sound like much to you, keep in mind that feral pigs live in 253 out of 254 Texas counties. It's pretty easy to find one. In fact, in Texas, it might be harder not to stumble upon a feral pig. Actually, since people have realized that feral pigs are a real problem, they've come up with different traps to hunt them. One example is a box trap. It's like a wooden box with a hinged door. The pig triggers it, the door shuts, and that's it. Another type of trap is the cage trap, which consists of thick wire on a metal frame. It's similar to the first trap, but this design is lighter, making it easier for pigs to get away. To catch a bunch of pigs, it's best to use trap pens. These are like sturdy, big cages, often round-shaped. This stops the pigs from huddling in a corner and making a run for it. If you ask hunters, they think that shooting feral pigs from a helicopter is the most effective method for population control. The helicopter's altitude and the noise it generates create an advantageous scenario, causing the pigs to flee. It also allows easy access to hard-to-reach places. Only pros, no cons. Nevertheless, there is a major drawback. Despite the lack of hunting restrictions, incentives for pigtails, and even attempts at shooting them from helicopters, hunters only achieve a success rate of 2-3%. to No matter how hard humans try, wild pigs are winning. In some states, authorities have gone as far as banning hunting altogether. Surprisingly, it seems that hunting makes wild hogs more cautious, prompting them to become nocturnal and making them even harder to find and kill. But we still need to do something about it. Wild hogs cause a minimum of $2.5 billion in damage to the U.S. every year. In the past few years, the state has spent over $100 million in federal funds to tackle the hog issue. And now, to make matters worse, there are these super pigs coming down from the north. Things seem to be getting out of hand, and some are suggesting we call in the Army. Well, the Army's already involved. The U.S. is using military equipment, like thermal imaging scopes, which you can find on eBay for around $12,000 each to track down feral pigs. In the near future, they also want to use drones. After all, they're now used everywhere. Feral pigs are also fought by specially trained people who have military training. Former officers and actual combat veterans fight against the animals as if they were armed opponents. Don't dismiss this as gibberish, they actually pull it off. The military can clear out a whole farm of wild pigs, achieving success that other hunters can only dream of. They don't even label it as a hunt. There's also a problem with helicopters. Despite having them, pigs, being clever animals, figured out that they can hide in wooded areas, especially at night. This makes the search more difficult, requiring longer flights to locate targets. As a result, the cost has climbed to an average of $1,000 per hunt. According to the studies, the top ways people deal with feral hogs are shooting, hunting, and trapping. And out of these, shooting is considered the priciest method. And on top of all that, we've got these super pigs moving in and claiming their turf. The costs tied to dealing with them are still a bit of a mystery, and frankly, a bit worrisome. Meet Hogzilla, a colossal pig that's a mix of wild boar and domestic pig basically a super pig. This massive hybrid was hunted down in Georgia in 2004. When scientists checked him out a year later, they found Hogzilla weighed 800 pounds and measured between 7 and 8 feet long. Even though the people who killed him claimed he was even bigger, those figures are already impressive enough. Hogzilla stands as the largest super pig ever caught, so huge that it became something of an urban legend. Just to give you an idea, a regular domestic pig is about 53 inches long and 29 inches tall. Now, a wild pig stretches around 59 to 71 inches long and stands at 35 inches tall. In a nutshell, Hogzilla is bigger than all of them. Now let's get back to the present, because there's an important thing to note. Wild pigs, even the super pigs, aren't exactly excited about being hunted. They get stressed, become more cautious, and step up their hiding game. But there's more to the story. Feral hogs have a knack for helping each other out. There's even a video showing a grown-up female hog helping two little ones escape a trap by moving some logs that were blocking the way. It's impressive enough that she realized how the trap even works in the first place. Lots of hunters complain that traps, in general, don't do as good a job as they'd want. Maybe it's because the hogs are suspecting something, so it takes two weeks to lure out one group. And you gotta catch the entire group, or the ones left free get too suspicious, making it impossible to catch them later. On top of that, feral pigs have an incredible sense of smell. They can catch scents from a whopping seven miles away and detect things buried up to 25 feet deep. 
They have these abilities because they're omnivores. When you're looking around for food, it's way more efficient to smell it out than randomly poking around, plus knowing where danger lurks makes it easier for them to keep their distance. Good news for pigs, not so great for hunters. Despite that, a fair share of big feral pigs get shot on a regular basis. What happens to them after? I mean, why not make use of all that meat? It's surprising that none of the guidelines advocating for wild pig control suggest using the meat afterward. Everyday hunters may enjoy their catch, but selling the meat in bulk just doesn't make sense. While it tastes pretty much like regular pork, the cost is way higher. Moreover, many people steer clear of eating wild pig meat due to the fear of catching something. Given the variety of diseases these animals can carry, those worries are not unfounded. Yet, despite the expenses and risks, some places are still trying to sell this meat. Take Dai Du Restaurant in Austin, Texas, for example, where they've got a bunch of dishes featuring wild pork on the menu. Then there's Broken Arrow Ranch, focused on killing and delivering hogs for further processing. The local crew manages to sell around 1,500 to 1,700 hogs annually, but there are a few details to consider. First, the animals are captured and put through a quarantine process to eliminate parasites. After that, the hogs are fed well for about six months to enhance the taste of the meat before it ends up on someone's plate. Oh, and it's important that it's not an adult male. The hormones in male meat make it so off-putting that it's immediately deemed spoiled. In the United States, there are 15 federally monitored facilities where feral hogs are processed. Considering the overall number of animals, it's not just a tiny figure. You could pretty much ignore these ranches. What about Canada and its super pigs? Well, they don't eat them there because they can't catch them. I mean, there's a super pig culling there, and hunters are paid $75 for every pair of ears they get. And guess what? In the five months that the program was in effect, zero ears were turned in. It turns out that people just don't know where to hunt the hogs, and even the government doesn't know that. And it's very difficult to catch a super pig. These animals are not only bigger than their southern relatives, they're also smarter. They can also seem to be great at hiding when they need to. Until recently, people in Canada didn't even know where these wild hogs were. It took three years to get at least a rough map, but that didn't help much either. For Canada to start eating super pigs, Canada has to find them first. And while they're looking for wild hogs in Canada, efforts to deal with feral hogs continue in the US. By now, you probably get the picture. These animals adapt to being hunted, but they're still wreaking havoc on agriculture. With their love for all kinds of food and the knack to dig the soil like a cultivator, feral hogs are a major headache for farmers. They routinely mess up crops, pastures, forests, and livestock. Remember that $2.5 billion of damages a year? And yes, it's only going to get worse with super pigs. Imagine how happy they'd be when they're in a milder climate and with lots of food too. A simple example, Adam McClendon, a Georgia farmer working on a family owned 7,900 acre plot growing peanuts, corn, and cotton, estimates that feral hogs have been costing him more than $100,000 annually for the past 15 years. It's not just about wrecking the crops, these creatures also leave behind fields full of pits so deep that you can't plant anything again. Cleaning up the soil is a whole task, and you're never sure if the pigs will return right after. You might find yourself starting from scratch all over again. Up in Canada, the super pigs aren't too different from their younger relatives in the U.S. Just like the regular wild pigs, these super pigs eat wheat, barley, rapeseed, and pretty much anything they can find. They go around wrecking large farmland areas like many bulldozers, taking mud baths and riverbeds, causing erosion and water pollution, and of course pose a threat to domestic pigs with diseases. A classic scenario. Farmers in both Canada and the U.S. are clearly ready to go beyond conventional methods and get creative to solve the problem. One intriguing approach to dealing with feral pigs is through the use of what they call Judas pigs. First, they catch one wild pig and put a collar with a beacon on it and then release it into the wild. Pigs don't live alone, so the animal hurries to find a group to join. Once this happens, the wild pigs accompanying the Judas pig are either trapped or killed by shooting and only the unwitting traitor is allowed to escape. Why? So that it can find a new group to join. And this cycle can continue as long as the Judas pig stays alive. We've talked a lot today about farmers and their substantial losses. However, it's essential to recognize that feral hogs, including super pigs, aren't just wreaking havoc on agriculture. They're also causing significant harm to other wildlife. 
As invasive predators, remember, wild hogs are predators, they don't play well with native species, super pigs don't hesitate to hunt down and devour the offspring of other species, with male pigs even capable of pursuing their prey before snatching it with their mouths. Picture a large, aggressive beast chasing you and you're, let's say, a turkey chick? Sounds like a nightmare. There are accounts indicating that feral pigs could be changing the habits of everyday native wildlife such as raccoons, squirrels, and deer. Scientists using trail cameras noticed that in places where wild pigs roamed, other animals changed how and when they usually moved around. In essence, they did whatever it took to avoid any unwanted encounters. From northern bobwhites to red-cheeked salamanders, snails, and turtles, even the Florida panther, this is just a glimpse of the various animals that have felt the impact of feral hogs in some way. As for the super pigs, they might not have a lengthy list just yet, but the keyword here is yet. With a heartier appetite and more extensive territory, it might not be long before we hear about super pigs contributing to the extinction of certain species. Feral pigs might be partially responsible for the decline of the Florida panther, which hunts pigs and can contract pseudo-rabies from them. See you later.